This is U.S. History Regents Review for Unit 2. In these videos, we are going to focus on the first presidents of the United States and their policies. We're going to look at antebellum America, meaning the time leading up to the Civil War, social, economic, and political developments. And then we're going to finish off with the Civil War, the causes of the Civil War, the war itself, as well as its long-term significance. So let's get started. George Washington is the first president of the United States. Things you need to know about George Washington. As the president, he set a number of precedents. This word means examples to follow. So presidents who come after him are all going to follow after the example that he set. Some of the most important precedents are that he created a cabinet. A cabinet is a group of advisors to the president at this time included the Secretary of the Treasury, which was Alexander Hamilton for him, the Secretary of State, his was Thomas Jefferson, the Secretary of War, and the Attorney General. He decided to step down after two years, I'm sorry, two terms as president, so a total of eight years. Every president after this, until FDR in the 1940s, followed this example. They would have two terms, four years each, and then they'd choose not to run again. The third most significant precedent that he set was his farewell address, which urged the nation to stay neutral, specifically to stay out of the war between Great Britain and France. In this document, he goes over a variety of things, including recommending that the North and South get along, despite their economic differences. He warns against the dangers of political parties, what he calls factions, and then he says to stay isolated. Another important term you might find in the exam is the Whiskey Rebellion. Basically, a bunch of farmers rise up against the whiskey tax and they rebel. And George Washington sends out the federal government troops to put down the rebellion. It's significant because it shows that the federal government under the new constitution is powerful and strong enough to enforce its own laws. It's a success for our new democracy. A very important part of Washington's administration is his Secretary of the Treasury, Alexander Hamilton. His Secretary of the Treasury set up the nation's financial system. So if you take a look at this graphic, you will see Hamilton's economic plan. It had several parts. The first part is dealing with the debt. How are we going to establish our credit as a nation? So what he did is he took the debt that each individual state had after the Revolutionary War, and he consolidated it under the federal government. So instead of each state either having their own debts or not, he had one big federal debt. Now, why would he do this? Well, it would build investor confidence in the stability of the new nation. You can think of it like a credit score. If the United States government can show that it can pay off debts, it will build up its credit score and other nations will want to trade with us. He wanted a way to gain revenue. He established a tariff. You can see the definition down here. A tariff, sometimes called a protective tariff, is a tax on imports. This is how the federal government earns its revenue from the first half really of American history. It also protects American manufacturing because it encourages people to buy American products. When you put a tax on foreign products, it makes American made products comparatively cheaper. So people who do manufacturing like tariffs, but also the downside is that it makes goods overall more expensive. Since you've added a tax on it, um, overall prices are going to increase on goods. So it's not great for the consumer, but it's great for the manufacturer in the country. This is going to be a big controversy throughout the next century. Um, but all you need to know, really, the political parties are going to argue about tariffs, is that tariffs are usually supposed to be pro-business. So people who want American businesses and manufacturing to grow are going to support a protective tariff. Hamilton also wants to stabilize the banking system. He creates the first national bank, the Bank of the United States. 
And this bank is going to print money, but it's also going to um, loan money out. It sets interest rates, all these things. Uh, his plan also included a whiskey tax. It's not on here, um, but it's called an excise tax. So it charged the farmers. That's what caused the whiskey rebellion. Hamilton does die, sadly, in a duel. That won't be on your exam, but it is a fun fact. Now we're going to have a document moment. Washington's farewell address. This is a significant document. Uh, it could appear on your exam. So this is where Washington is leaving the country. He is saying goodbye to the nation. And he wrote this and sent it to newspapers around the country for Americans to read. What he does is he warns against a passionate attachment of one nation for another produces a variety of evils. Sympathy for the favorite nation, facilitating the illusion of imaginary common interests in cases where no real common interest exists, and infusing into one the enmities of the other, betrays the former into a participation in the quarrels and wars of the latter without adequate inducement or justification. So that's a pretty complicated paragraph, but Basically, he's saying our country should not become passionately attached, should not form official alliances with other countries. That will create an evil because it gives us the illusion that there's some sort of common interest that we have with that country, when in reality, it's just going to lead to quarreling and wars that we don't need to be involved in. So he is concerned about us being pulled into wars with foreign nations. The great rule of conduct for us in regard to foreign nations is in extending our commercial relations. A commercial relation is a trade relationship. To have with them as little political connection as possible. So far as we have already formed engagements, let them be fulfilled with perfect good faith. Here let us stop. Europe has a set of primary interests, which to us have none, or a very remote relation. So our interests are not their interests. Hence, she must be engaged in frequent controversies, the causes of which are essentially foreign to our concerns. It is our true policy to steer clear of permanent alliances with any portion of the foreign world. That sentence right there is the summary sentence for this part of the address. We should stay out of permanent alliances. This precedent Washington is setting is so significant because this is essentially what we try to do um, for the next century after Washington. Isolationism, neutrality. We consistently tried to do that. And oftentimes we're able to do that because of the Atlantic Ocean, which separates us from Europe. It allows us to try to stay neutral when we can. And we'll see that desire to stay neutral pop up during World War I and World War II. The very first political parties do emerge, even though in Washington's farewell address, he warns against political parties, they happen immediately anyways. So let's take a look at the two sides. The first side is the Republicans, also called the Democratic Republicans. Thomas Jefferson is their main leader. Madison is also a Democratic Republican. They believe that the people should be the center of power, they believe in power for the people, liberties, freedoms, and they want that to be expressed through state governments. A lot of the people who became uh, Republicans were the people who were originally anti-federalists. So they don't want a ton of federal control. They want it to be decentralized. Jefferson believed ideally our nation should just be an agricultural nation. We should all just be farmers. Um, off living on our own land um, and experiencing the blessings of liberty far away from a central power. Generally, they were pro-French. Jefferson loved the French. And they were really, you know, suspicious of federal power. They were against the National Bank. They were against the protective tariff. They want freedoms and liberties. On the other side are the Federalists. Alexander, Alexander Hamilton is our main Federalist. He believes, you know, the elites, they are more wealthy and educated and they should be in charge. We should have a strong central government. He believed we need to get into financial systems, manufacturing, shipping, trade. They were usually pro-British, 
pro-bank, pro-tariff. 